After being banned from all the major social media platforms in August 2022, many thought that we'd seen the end of Andrew Tate, but those people couldn't have been more wrong. In many ways, his influence has only grown over the past few months, despite all the efforts made to suppress him. It seems like every other day, a new podcast pops up with Andrew, and just as they did before he was deplatformed, they rake in millions of views. He's not been nearly as controversial as he was in the past, so a lot of people who didn't like him before have come around to him. And for those that have been paying attention, they'll have noticed a common thread in the things he's been saying recently. If they lock me up for some insane bullshit, I didn't do it. Hmm. And if they say I killed myself, I didn't kill myself either. It's all a fucking lie. And I'm going to hmm. say that here now. Just six days after this podcast was released, news broke that Andrew and his brother Tristan were arrested as part of an investigation into several serious crimes. What followed these announcements was absolute chaos on social media, with people claiming everything from the arrest being faked to him being cleared of all charges and released. But what is it that really happened? And what part did Greta Thunberg and the infamous pizza box have to play in Tate's arrest? To get the full picture and to understand the chess moves Andrew's been making over the past few months, we have to go back to August 2022. After being banned from Facebook and Instagram in late August, like Domino's, one social media platform after the next banned Tate. The claim was that he violated their policies around hate speech, following allegations that Andrew was a misogynist whose messages were influencing young men to treat women poorly. Many celebrated Tate's deplatforming, calling for other social media platforms like Twitch to ban him as well, but others found this extremely concerning, seeing it as a restriction of free speech. Shortly after his cancellation, Tate followers began posting his final message on YouTube, which was an hour-long video of him addressing the recent events. Almost immediately, you could tell something was off. Andrew seemed serious and his normal bravado and swagger took the back seat in order to deliver what was clearly an important message. He claimed the allegations being made against him were false and explained what bothers him is that the level of backlash and hate he's been receiving is now affecting those closest to him. The public consciousness has been polluted to a point where narratives are being purported which are absolutely and utterly false. And it's having a genuine negative impact on the people who I care about and the people who care about me. And despite the fact it doesn't emotionally affect me, as a man, I have a duty to protect all of those I love. And for this reason, these narratives have started to become very, very harmful. He also addressed allegations that he held a woman captive in his Romanian residence that year. Someone made a call about me, which was fake. The police responded. They turned up and investigated as they should. And they found out that it was completely false, that nobody was kidnapped, nobody was held against their will. I was not charged. I have no accusations against me for hurting women. And people are still on the internet saying, he's a human trafficker, the Romanian police are trying to get him in trouble for human trafficking. That's not true. After all of this happened, people thought that was it for Tate. But after the dust settled, his name was still everywhere. News outlets, YouTubers, even schools and universities were reporting on his cancellation. And over the next couple of months, as if nothing happened, he kept popping up on a number of different podcasts. On one particular podcast released just three weeks after his deplatforming, Tate explained that he anticipated his cancellation and that inevitably he will have a redemption arc. I've been talking about my band for years. When I've been on every podcast saying I'm going to get banned for three years and then I get banned, you didn't surprise surprise anybody, didn't surprise me. I've been talking about it for a very, very long time. The things I say are too powerful and too beneficial to the populace for it not to turn around where people say, Tate is a good man. This is why I talk about the redemption arc. It may take six months, may take two years. But it wasn't just the social media platforms that had cast him out. He'd been banned from Uber, Airbnb, Stripe, the list goes on. And when seemingly all the powers that be are against you, a redemption arc is a bold prediction to make. Yet over the coming weeks and months, we started to see it happen. Because just as there was a large group of people that wanted to silence Tate, there were also those that wanted to hear what he had to say. One of those people was Piers Morgan, a British journalist and TV personality. On October 7th, 2022, Piers invited Andrew on his TV show Piers Morgan Uncensored for an hour-long interview. He's now been effectively banned though from the internet. He doesn't think that's fair. Tonight, I'm going to try and work out if it is. Unfortunately, it quickly became clear that while Piers did want to hear what Andrew had to say, he wanted to hear himself speak a lot more. The point I'm making, if you'll please let me finish sure. at this point. And this but, is the thing that's interesting, Piers, please let me finish. Yeah, but are you, again, you're please. behaving like a politician. Yeah, but hang on, you can say I'm interrupting. You do. But, if, but you're answering a different question to the one I asked you. Then she's going to go. Then. But you as don't a have authority to stop Okay, her. but as a couple, 
if we're going to sit there and decide if we're going to take this. You asked me, Dovis, would I feel a sense of responsibility for our safety? Absolutely. Agreed. Absolutely. So, so would let me I have finish the Piers. power or authority to stop her doing it? No. No, of course not. So let me finish, Piers. Almost the entire interview went like this, with Andrew trying to say something and Piers cutting him off before he was finished. I slapped my skull in frustration over how insanely interruptive Piers was. Imagine calling this an interview when you interrupt the guest every five seconds. There's no denying the interview was difficult to watch. And although it must have been extremely frustrating for Andrew at the time, he came away from it looking quite good. He remained cool, calm and collected despite Piers' constant interruptions, which made Piers come off as the villain and Andrew the good guy. The interview has been seen over 8 million times on YouTube alone and Tate has acknowledged that it was a big win for him all round. Was Piers Morgan the worst interviewer you've ever experienced? I knew what he was going to do. I don't think I lost. In fact, when my team sent me the report, 99.4% of all comments on the YouTube video are positive for me. I think the only loser was, besides him, he lost. The viewer. And the viewer. Because I never got to explain anything. So it was kind of just like frustrating to watch. Yeah. So I won from a PR perspective. By all observable metrics, it was a good interview for me. Mm. So to say he's the worst interviewer, well, the idea of doing an interview is that you come off good. I came off fantastically. In fact, it was one of my best performances and I barely fucking spoke. So, <laughs> so it could be the best. It could be the best. Later that month, a video was posted on Twitter by actor and MMA fighter Tam Khan showing Andrew praying in a mosque. Andrew has shown respect to the religion of Islam many times in the past, but it was on the day this video was posted that he announced his official conversion. He was welcomed by members of the Islamic community although there were others who didn't show him the same respect. True Geordie, a well-known UK podcaster and YouTube personality, made a joke in response to Tate's conversion, saying he'd gladly blow himself up if he could take Andrew with him. The two have had a long-standing beef, which you can learn about in my video here, but in short, Andrew responded to True Geordie, chastising him for the disrespect he showed to the billions of Muslims around the world. This event, similar to what's happened with Piers Morgan, showed Andrew in a favourable light. He spoke for the thousands of Muslims who are offended by True Geordie's comments, and one once again came away as the good guy in the scenario. Meanwhile over at Twitter, Elon Musk was taking over after just having bought the company for $44 billion. To add to the long list of controversial things he's done since the deal went through, Elon unbanned a number of high profile individuals who were previously banned. These included names like Donald Trump, Kanye West and of course Andrew Tate. Within hours of being unbanned, thousands flocked to Andrew's Twitter page to follow him and to date Tate has amassed close to 5 million followers which is a testament to how much influence he still has. In many tweets he's posted since he's been back online, he's referred to the Matrix and the threat it poses not only to him, but to wider society. It's not a matter of, you're thinking of it more as a small select room of people who are trying to control their world like a superhero movie. Yeah. It, could be, uh, it could be like that, but it's not like that. What it is, is you have very influential people with a lot of power, with a lot of resource, who are interested in creating slave minds amongst the general populace because they don't want to upset they're a very fortunate position in the world. Yeah. In a podcast released in November 2022, Andrew spoke of the dangers he's facing, and as if completely aware of what was to come, he predicted his own arrest. The only thing I will say I don't like about being banned is that you get three lives when you attack powerful people. They first ban you and try and shut you up. Secondly, they'll put you in jail for something you didn't do. And thirdly, mm. they'll kill you. So I've used my first life, which is kind of upsetting when you know that next is going to be some false charges. The two worst ones. Yeah, yeah and, and af if you survive the false charges, you just die. However, at this point, Tate was very much still a free man, living the same life of luxury we're so used to seeing, so it was hard to imagine him actually behind bars. But it was in December 2022 that everything would change. For most of the month, things were as normal. Tate was making more podcast appearances, and he even made a second appearance on Piers Morgan Uncensored. You could see from the YouTube comment sections of these interviews that many people were changing their thoughts about him and what he said stands for. I had so many negative things to say about this man up until yesterday and watching this interview. I'm mad at myself for being a slave to social media and judging someone based off he said, she said and 30 second reels, but I'm happy that I took the time out to really sit and listen and allow myself to learn and be enlightened. I'll be continuing to listen and learn from him, so thank you for this. Along with the podcast appearances, December was also a month of internet beefs for Tate, and things really started to heat up given he now had access to his Twitter account. He continued his ongoing feud with Logan Paul, 
calling him out for the crypto scam he's recently been involved in and he had a viral Twitter exchange with Swedish environmental activist Greta Thunberg. On December 27th, Andrew tweeted at Greta, trolling her about his extensive car collection and their enormous emissions. He asked her to provide her email address so he could send her a complete list of his car collection. The following day, Greta replied saying, yes, please do enlighten me. Email me at smalldickenergy at getalife.com. Andrew responded just hours later with a video of him in a Versace robe with a Romanian pizza box. So I'm actually mad at Greta, right? Because she doesn't realize she's been programmed. She doesn't realize she's a slave of the matrix. She thinks she's doing good. Someone has sat her down and convinced her to try and convince you to beg your government to tax you into poverty to stop the sun from being hot. Just one day later, news broke that Andrew and his brother Tristan had been arrested with video footage showing them being escorted by police. Romanian prosecutors said the Tate brothers, along with two unnamed people, appear to have created an organized crime group with the purpose of recruiting, housing, and exploiting women by forcing them to create adult content meant to be seen on specialized websites for a cost. The women were allegedly subjected to physical violence and mental coercion through intimidation, constant surveillance, control, and invoking alleged debts. Six potential victims were identified. Following the arrest, all kinds of rumors and conspiracies started popping up online. One that caught traction was that Romanian police were tipped off to Andrew's whereabouts from the pizza box in his video response to Greta. It turns out that the Romanian authorities needed proof that Andrew Tate was in the country because he travels so much, and they reportedly used his social media posts, including a Romanian pizza chain, Jerry's Pizza, which confirmed that he was in the country and able to be arrested. Greta responded to Tate's arrest by tweeting, this is what happens when you don't recycle your pizza boxes, making people buy into this theory even more. But it was put to bed by Romanian officials not long after Greta's tweet, with them saying that the pizza boxes had nothing to do with the arrest. Apparently, arrest warrants and searches had already been in place before the pizza box post appeared on Twitter. It turns out the criminal investigation into the Tate brothers has been ongoing since April 2022, back when police raided their mansion in Romania, following a tip-off that they were holding a 21-year-old American woman against her will. As we know, Andrew and Tristan were questioned and later released, but the investigation was expanded to cover even more serious allegations. Strangely, a day after his arrest, Andrew tweeted from his official Twitter account saying, the Matrix sent their agents. This fueled rumors that Andrew had already been released and numerous videos claiming this started being posted on TikTok. But again, this was proven to be false as reports emerged that a Romanian court ordered the detention of Andrew, Tristan, and the other two suspects for another 30 days. While it's unclear who behind the posts on his Twitter account, what is clear is this. Andrew knew this was coming. From the footage of the arrest, Andrew and Tristan appear to fully cooperate with the Romanian police, suggesting they have nothing to hide. What's hard to understand about this whole situation is what motivation the Tate brothers would even have to commit these crimes. They have no need for the money as it's well known they're both multi-millionaires. They have no need to force women into sex since they have countless beautiful women that are already interested in them. And they have everything to lose by risking a life most people dream of for a life behind bars. Andrew has said many times that he's not done anything that would justify his arrest, but ultimately, there's no way to know what the outcome of their case will be until the news breaks. Those that know the Tate brothers personally all speak very highly of them. They confidently say that they're not men capable of committing these crimes. These guys are the furthest thing from criminals. They're the furthest thing from human traffickers. These guys are family men. These guys donate to charities. These guys willingly provide different support systems all over Romania that they don't necessarily might not talk about publicly. And they've been doing that for the better part of a decade. Because I know the guy personally. I know his big heart. I know how loving he is. I've seen how he gives charity, looks after kids. We go to hospitals. He came to my gym to play with the kids and do pictures with everyone local malls, local skate parks. The guy is loved by many for a reason. But if you take one look at the news, the Tate brothers are endlessly vilified and disparaged. So you have one camp saying Andrew is a genuine, caring and respectful man, while the other says he's a hateful criminal who has no concern for anyone but himself. Public opinion of him seems to be so split down the middle, it's no wonder he's still one of the most popular and notorious men on the planet. Back when he was deplatformed in August, the hate for him seemed to be at an all-time high. People were near enough calling for his head. But as the months have gone by, more and more people have seemingly come around to him. Sure, there's still a large group of people who want to see the last of Tate, but it started to look like there was some hope for the redemption arc he predicted. However, his recent arrest and implication in these atrocious crimes has definitely set him back, regardless of whether he's cleared of the charges. If it turns out the Romanian authorities are right and Andrew and his brother have committed these crimes, then frankly, they deserve everything coming to them. But if the allegations turn out to be false, then maybe the Matrix really is out to get them.